The idea of LoRa is to take a large matrix, let's say n by n, and to add on a second representation of that n by n matrix, but to do so with a much more compact matrix. It's done using a first matrix A, which is of width n, but then reduces down to OR. And a second matrix B that is of width OR and then expands back out to n. The original matrix of weights, which is the pre-trained model, is often called W. And this LoRa adapter here is also ca often called delta W. The size of matrix A is going to be OR by N and the size of matrix B is also going to be OR by N. So if we have N, if we have OR much smaller than N, then the total size of A and B will be much smaller than the size of N by N. Now here's how the LoRa method works for fine tuning. You freeze the original weight matrix here N by N. Then you take the matrix A and you set it to random values. Then you take matrix B and you set it to zeros. So initially, because B is zeros, delta W will be zero and no, have no effect on forward or backward propagation. But as you train the model with back propagation, B will move from zero and the random values in A will adjust to minimize the overall loss. And so delta W will start to contribute on top of the original W. Now the remarkable thing about LoRa is that you can choose OR with values as small as four or maybe 34, even when N might be 512 or even 1028 or even larger. And what's even more remarkable is that these smaller values of OR sometimes result in a better training than if you set OR equals to N, in which case you would just be retraining the full N by N model. So LoRa seems to indicate that the original matrices in pre-chain models are somewhat uncondensed and could, in theory, be represented in a better form. They, for now, allow us, using LoRa, to train models, or to fine-tune them at least, in a way that's much more compute efficient, that requires less memory, smaller GPUs, and also leads to better results.